Hi, my name is David Powell. I'll be working in the 10 rooms at Holmeson House and I'll be working in Willow. For Holmeson House, uh, for the commission piece, I made a visit to the house itself and had a look around the exterior of the building. And what I was looking at was architectural features. Um, and one of my interests in the past has always be, has been doorways, portals, windows. And my work itself deals with the kind of the movement of, between, of people uh, round or in a space or through spaces. And when while looking at the exterior, I noticed that up on the at the top of the building, underneath of each of the eaves, there's actually a small aperture. Uh, so within the aperture itself, there were three small holes. So what I've decided to do is construct a piece of sculpture which is actually based on one of the holes in the apertures. Uh, in a sense it's become an abstract piece but the piece itself is very much something that is based on the design of the building. Uh, what interested me in it was the fact that the window, the apertures seem to have held something, whether they've held a piece of sculpture or they've held another piece of work. So by constructing something that's a portal then I've made something that people can look through, they can see, pass through and walk round. The piece of work for Holmeson actually involves the construction of a small armature. Um, which will be then woven round about using uh, basket willow. In this case I'll be using uh, two different types of willow. Um, a willow which will have the, the bark left on which is uh, brown basket or steamed willow and also white willow. The armature itself is being constructed from 6mm steel uh, or round bar as they call it in the trade. Uh, this is then, it's bent, twisted and welded together. Uh, this is a two-dimensional form I just now. This will actually be constructed in 3D and will be fleshed out to give it a kind of three-dimensional form which will allow people to walk round about it and actually interact with the sculpture itself. With the town heritage project, what I particularly like is that the focus has been on the older buildings within the town uh, and the use of traditional um, conservation and management te techniques on those buildings. It would be nice to see them used and it would be really good to see people inhabiting the, the spaces again and using the spaces. It never ceases to amaze me the variety if you, you know, of shapes and forms that can be found above street level. And if you do look at the rooftops and the higher windows, then you begin to get an idea of what air was like in the past. And it transports you back several hundred years at least, really, in that sense. Stewart uh, and uh, I'm a glass artist and um, I'm going to be doing a panel which is going to be a uh, cut glass, copper foil and lead work. The brief was to be about the built environment in air. So, um, I mean, I've lived, I've, I've, I was born and brought up in air. I was spent a lot of time in Glasgow working, but uh, um, there's some beautiful buildings and beautiful details, and so it just it took lots of photographs. Sort of inspired by uh, there's some lovely um, arches, arch details above doors round about the Sandgate and uh, sort of down the top of uh, Newmarket Street. So it's kind of based on that uh, and a very uh, architectural feel. But at the same time, I love my garden and I love flowers and a lot of the work I do has flowers in it. So, um, and of course we've got beautiful hydrangeas in the garden at the moment. So there's a bit of that detail in there as well, just mixing a bit of what I do and a bit of what the brief was as well. So.
through and I'm going to be working in cyanotype, um, which is a, a form of kind of blueprinting um, for the uh, 10 Rooms project. Basically, like the, the way I work is that my commission piece is going to be very much similar to the rest of my work, uh, and the way I work is very much kind of pattern based. So uh, I use like the kind of dimensions of the surface I'm working on, be it paper or canvas, and I'll basically create a grid on that, which uh, will take midpoints and cross sections, and 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 basically through that same process to start each piece, uh, I'll kind of pull out patterns and and kind of like different um, shapes and I mean the very like simplest form is, is basically a, a kind of cross so I create like a diamond on the on the kind of sheet of paper or canvas and, and that's kind of how I started by kind of creating shapes uh, and like you know filling in certain like uh, areas of the, the pattern and like leaving others which kind of creates these kind of geometric abstract kind of compositions I suppose so uh, the more I've done that, the kind of more intricate they become, and the more kind of abstract the shapes become, and, and it's kind of became more uh, architectural, I think, uh, through through that process. And uh, yeah, basically just there's building blocks there, and I'm just kind of working with them. And basically, the, it's a kind of full graphic solution uh, that is kind of primed onto a kind of canvas or paper, and then exposed to sunlight. So with this piece, I've, I've created a stencil, which. Uh, was placed over the, the canvas and it was basically left in the sun for five to ten minutes and it goes from this kind of like really a luminous yellow colour to this really vibrant blue colour with, like within that time and then once it's washed you kind of get that. But with, with this piece with uh, the kind of cotton that I've, I've stretched over boards, uh, the solution uh, Kind of also kind of creates a film on the wood and then that's how why you get this kind of like like light blue kind of background which is kind of like very kind of painterly I suppose and which is where I really started uh, at art school as, as a painter so that's one of the other reasons that I really like this kind of technique. Hi, I'm Isabel Short. Um, I, the medium I use really is collage, but I, I, I also paint in either oils or acrylics and oil pastels. I start off drawing my image and then um, I quite often paint some of it, like in this picture here, I, you know, I did some oil painting first and then um, I go on to printing papers and using the printed papers to give me the 3D effect or the feeling I want from the painting. If you like, I sort of a 75% of it's probably collage and that's the time, the, the time consuming part of it. I found I had a sort of empathy with buildings and urban landscapes especially older type buildings that just seem to have something to conceal. The The piece that I've done is um, a sort of iconic building, I think it is, in the air, the pink buildings, which are right as you go across the bridge in New Bridge Street. Um, I've always been fascinated with, with that building, mainly because when I was young we spent our summer holidays there. We lived in Glasgow and we used to come down to air at the Glasgow Fair. You know, we always took a house or a rooms or something. And we had rooms at the top of that house. And I can just remember so vividly the turreted stairway and, and pushing my a young sister in a pram, you know, bouncing her down all the stairs and looking over to the to the river and, and the sea. So I've always been very um, aware of my surroundings and where I am. It means, you know, I can be comfortable or not. It's quite important for me. So, And I still... When I walk along that bridge, I have to I have to really stop and look at that house because 
it just has something for me that I have to, you know, think about. It's got memories and it's just so beautiful with the curves in it, you know, and the and all the architecture and the architecture. It's lovely. Medium I work in is etching, that's the, the main area. Well, the commissioned piece, um, it'll be based on the built environment as, as the brief, but I, I'm very particular about detailing and buildings and just just the actual building image and its setting. So the the commission this year will probably be based on a, a specific piece of architecture. Um, and I, I usually like to kind of isolate the building so it stands on its own in its uh, kind of natural set. Um, and I, I tend to rely on um, strong drawing skills really to to capture the, the essence of the image. So this is um, this is an etching produced by uh, a student at Air Academy, and the project was initiated by the Air Townscape Initiative to produce a series of etchings based on the architecture of Air Academy. I studied architecture for a long time, and then worked with architects for about ten years as well. So. That, I mean, that gave me a real strong interest in buildings. A lot of time I would be spent on scaffolding, measuring and uh, surveying buildings and photographing them and then redrawing them again and again, depending on what sort of refurbishment was required for the building. So, uh, yeah, I, it, was a, it was a good kind of technical uh, learning curve, so it, it works well. You know, to now be able to transfer those skills to fine art, basically. Just walking up and down the high street and the sand gate and the fort area, you can see the history and the architecture. My name is Angela Steele and I'm working in stained glass. Ayrshire, there's an old kirk that's sat in the same site from 1593. So that's gone through quite a lot of changes and so has the town, but the, the kirk stood there. But um, the old kirk has got two arched leaded glass windows. So I just kind of thought about, you know, that church having sit there and witnessed all the changes and all the history that's happened, you know, in the few hundred years where it stood there. And I wanted to um, put some kind of imagery of, you know, the some of those ideas into the glass work. So I kind of focused on um, Henry, Dr. Henry Falls was a pioneer of forensic science. He was from B. So I'm using like the idea of the thumbprint and the handprint and um, um, there's a quite a history of smuggling and smuggling tunnels and stuff around B as well. So there's a bit of, there's a bit of imagery capturing that in it as well. So I'm using all the traditional techniques of, of, of leaded glass. So I've cut the, panel so I cut the glass, draw the cartoon, cut the glass and then start working on painting the glass. So the paint you use on the glass is vitreous enamel. You paint it on and you fire it in a kiln at 650 degrees so it means it's part of the glass um, and part of the ingredients, the main ingredients apart from pigment is silica. So when you fire the paint on the glass it stays there forevermore. Once I've finished all the imagery, the glass, I'm going to put it in the kiln to kind of age the glass. It'll be a bit ripply of a bit of texture. Um, I wanted to look as if it's been around for hundreds of years. Um, and then once all that's done, it'll be laded. So I use traditional lead came. Um, the glass fits into the, the lead. You build the panel on the on your table. When you've leaded it up, you solder it, you cement it. And when you cement it, that's it, it's rigid. It's quite a strong piece then. So, and that's the process. I 
Douglas Cairns. I run the Creation Station and I'm going to be doing children's arts and crafts classes for babies from six months to approximately 16 months and workshops for little explorers aged one to five years. children on a journey of exploration through colour, shape and texture. We run term time programmes and the children follow a, not a structure but they follow a journey of texture or colour or shape through the term. Little explorers are aged one to five years and babies are six months to approximately 16 months and then they're ready to move into little explorers. Each week they take something unique home, a unique piece of artwork home. We use different mediums, clay, willow, paint, um, papers, buttons, jewels, um, straws, anything that you can make something out of in the craft section of the activity then we will, we will use what's appropriate for the theme that we're exploring that week. At the start of Creation Station we always open the magic box and that uh, gives us items to stimulate our imagination. So when I start the class, I'll actually be uh, introducing, trying to explain to them how to build, how we get buildings, what we use buildings for. Um, they, these things will come out the magic box and then we will give them some items that they can use to make buildings out of and they just use their imagination and make buildings. And for the babies it's probably going to be more paint led where they will get to make little houses um, and use fingerprints for brickwork and things. <laughs> My name is Rosie Mapplebeck and I'm a professional storyteller. I live in Ayrshire and I like to tell stories of our local area, although I've collected stories from all over Scotland and others around the world from storytellers I've met. And that's the way I like to learn my stories, directly from people and tell to the people of all ages. I believe we all need stories. I'm really hoping that this will in, uh, inspire people to come and investigate their own environment, to have a look at the wonderful buildings that we do have in this townscape. Because there must be enough for all of us. And I don't know what would happen to you, Jack, if you took more than that. So you'll remember that, won't you? Oh, aye, Mummy, I'll remember that. I've got a wee present for you, Jack. Because... And from her pocket, she pulled out a ball that looked like a ball of her spun wool. And she gave it to Jack. And he thought, oh, my Mummy's getting a little soft in the head. She's given me a ball of wool. But I'll put it in my pocket to please her. And he thought no more of it that day. <laughs> 